What's up guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 22, it's a really cool episode. I head to the Bellagio and I play some 510. I get myself into some interesting situations and I play some really big hands. I think you guys are gonna like it a lot. But before we get into that, I wanna make a few announcements. One is that we set a date for the Vloggers game. It's gonna be July 26th at Stone's Gambling Hall in Sacramento. We're gonna live stream it on Twitch and then it'll be available on YouTube after that. Bart Hansen is going to be doing the commentating, and the lineup is going to consist of me, Andrew Nimi, Jeff Boski, Poker Kraut, a few other poker vloggers, and several locals from the Sacramento area. We're going to be battling it out in a 5-5 game. We're going to have some drinks, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So definitely watch that uh, when it comes up in July. Um, if you guys need to catch up on some of my vlogs or some of the guys I just mentioned or the Troopers or Jake Cody's, then I suggest you check out 9to5poker.com. They're a really, really cool site. They're dedicated to poker vloggers and other poker content creators on YouTube like Alec Torelli, Doug Polk, Joe Ingram, and uh, Daniel Negreanu, and a lot more guys. So um, check them out. I'll have a link below in the description box. Uh, we're going to be working together a little bit during this World Series. Um, they're going to put me in the Colossus actually in a few days, and I'm going to give 10% of my winnings away to one of their uh, subscribers. So um, click on the link below. That'll bring you to their site. Then a pop-up will appear within 10 to 15 seconds, and that'll give you directions on how to, how to qualify for 10% of any of my uh, potential winnings for the Colossus in a few days and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll win us both some money. Um, I'm actually gonna get into my plans for the WSOP at the end of, of this video, but uh, if you guys are coming out and you're trying to get yourself in the right mindset, um, in the past, what I've done to do that is uh, read poker books, which I have right behind me here on this bottom shelf. I've got a ton of them, and I'm happy to give you guys some recommendations. If you want them, just let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll definitely get back to you. But what I think is a lot more helpful are poker training sites. And I've been talking to Reed Young from Pokersprout.com. The guy is a poker super genius. He's come out with a ton of content. Uh, he talks about pre-flop strategy, um, hand reading, how to manage tilt, how to manage your bankroll, and he's got some great tournament strategy stuff and much, much more. His site is super user-friendly. I'll have a link down below. It'll take you from whatever level you're at now to a much higher one. He's got stuff for beginners, intermediate level stuff, and advanced players as well. So click on the link. There will be a seven-day free trial, and then it's only $30 a month after that, which is really, really reasonable. It's one of the best values for a poker training site that I've that I've seen out there. Um, and uh, I can almost guarantee you that you'll make that $30 back in no time at all if you just listen to his advice and his tips, and I think you'll make significantly more. So it'll really improve your game. Definitely take a look at it. Uh, I guess that's it for this intro. Let's go ahead and uh, get into the episode now. Sunday, May 21st, we're walking into the Bellagio Poker Room. There are three 5-10 games right now, so one should be pretty good. I joined the table and it looks great other than the 1020 Pro that's on my direct left. Within the first orbit, I pick up pocket jacks, under the gun, and a straddle pot. So we're playing 5, 10, 20, and I'm first to act. I open to 60 and get called by a player in middle position as well as the big blind. The straddler folds, so we go three ways to the flop. The flop comes 8, 6, 3 with one club and two spades. The big blind checks. I'm certainly going to bet for value. I bet 120 into 205. 
The first caller preflop now announces a raise to 350. It folds back to me. I'm in a really tough spot. There are only a few hands he'd raise me with that have me beat on the flop, but there are plenty of combo draw type hands that I'm either slightly ahead of or slightly behind against. I don't want to raise and get snap called by a hand that has me crushed, but folding also seems too weak since I'm ahead of a lot of his drawing hands, his top pair hands, and some of his over pairs like pocket nines and pocket tens. I make the call, and this is probably one of the worst hands I'll call with. I'd most likely fold pocket nines or pocket tens since if I had one of those, I'd hardly beat any of his hands he's raising with for value, and I'd have blockers to drawing hand combos, meaning that it's less likely he's raising as a semi bluff. So I call, and now we're playing a huge pot out of position against a player who's shown a lot of strength, and there are almost no good turns for us. The turn comes out, and it happens to be the Jack of Clubs. It's on the very short list of good cards for our hand. At this point, instead of wishing I'm up against a draw, I'm really hoping the opponent flopped two pair or a set and is drawing dead or nearly dead. I check, the opponent has 800 in front of him and he shoves all in. I snap call, I've got the nuts. The dealer puts out the river, it's the ace of spades. It's scary because the flush gets there but the opponent doesn't look very happy and he rolls over 6-3 of clubs. So he flopped bottom two pair, he turned the flush draw. Luckily for me, he didn't hit. I definitely caught a break on the turn, but that's kind of the problem with playing a hand like 6-3 suited. Even if you smash the flop, your opponent is almost always gonna be drawing live against you. I'm glad to win this one, especially so early in the session. I get lucky to be bailed out on the turn in this hand. But in general, pocket jacks can be very tricky to play. So if you want more information on how you should approach playing the hand in various situations, Poker Sprout actually has a whole lesson on it, cleverly titled Trouble Spots with Pocket Jacks. And it's broken down into several really interesting videos. Click the link below if you'd like to improve your results with those hooks. As I'm recording this, it's Memorial Day. And on this day, it's important to keep in mind all of those who have served and are currently serving the military. So I'd like to dedicate this next hand to my buddy, Baynard Marcus and his friends in Kuwait. This is gonna be good. I pick up queen jack of hearts in the hijack, the player under the gun limps, and so does a player in middle position. They happen to be the two weakest players at the table, and I have a hand that I wanna play in position, so I raise to 60 in order to ISO them. The best player at the table on my direct left now three bets to 160. Folds back to me. Let's go through all of our options here. I could fold, I'm near the bottom of my range, and I just wanted to play against the weak players. It's gonna be difficult for me to play a drawing hand out of position against someone who is very good and doesn't make many mistakes. Folding seems very reasonable. I could also call, since it's only 100 more and I'm getting about 2.5 to one odds. Or I can raise because this opponent is certainly capable of 3-betting light in position, so if he's raising me light, he'll most likely fold and I can take down a decent pot without even seeing a flop. Also, I have blockers to some big hands, and raising might get him to think twice before 3-betting me in the future, and even if I get caught, it could allow me to get called or 5-bet lighter when I actually have a premium holding that I'm 4-betting for value. You can't win if you fold, so I choose to look behind door number three, and I put in a don't mess with me bro, four bet to 450. The opponent doesn't waste a lot of time before putting in the classic, I'm not impressed five bet shove for 1600. I can't call, so I have to throw it away, and I light an extra 390 on fire that I didn't have to. In a smaller game, against a non-thinking player and non-creative opponents, I would never attempt to do something like this. Even in 5-10, it's not necessary at all, but there's a much better chance someone will 3-bet fold than in a 1-2 or 2-5 game. I tried to make a move at the wrong time, and I got punished. Sorry, Baynard, but uh, I tried for you. Now I get King Jack offsuit in middle position. I open to 30, several players fold, and the big blind buys the ticket for 20 more. The flop comes king nine six, two clubs, and the big blind checks. Great flop, I've got top pair and a backdoor flush draw. I bet 40, the big blind folds, we take it down. An hour later, we get pocket aces under the gun. We raise it up to 30, and we get two players to call in middle position. 
while the rest of the table folds. The flop comes king five deuce rainbow. I mix it up this time out of position with an overpair and I decide to check. The first caller bets 70 and the second player calls a 70. I'm obviously not folding in this situation. I make the call as well. The turn is the three of spades, so I pick up a gut shot straight draw to go along with my overpair. I check and my opponent bets 100. Percentage wise, this is a much smaller bet than he made on the flop. He went from betting nearly 70% of the pot on the flop to about one third pot on the turn. The second player makes the call. I can't imagine not being ahead the way the action is gone. I think that if the first player in middle position had a really strong hand, he'd be betting more than 100. And I think that if the second player had two pair or better, he would have raised. So I think I'm ahead. I put in a raise to 450. I'd be happy to get one call here, but I wouldn't mind taking down the pot right now since it's getting pretty big and I don't know which cards I need to fade on the river against two players while I'm out of position. Both players do fold and we win another decent pot. In the last hand for the video, we get pocket nines in the big blind. A rec player opens a 30 from under the gun plus one. It folds back to me, I make the call. The flop comes 10-3-3 rainbow, not a bad flop for pocket nines. I check, the opponent bets 30. No way we're going away that easily. I call, the turn is a four. I check and the opponent snap checks back. So at this point, it kind of feels like he's giving up with two over cards. Any card 10 or lower, I plan on betting tiny for value. But the river is a queen of diamonds, not great. I check and my opponent checks and turns over pocket sevens. So we win one last hand before getting put in the main game. That game wasn't nearly as good. So I racked up and headed to the cashier. Just cashed out for 2700. So I won a little over 1200 on the day. It was good, ran really well. Got a little bit creative with that queen jack of hearts hand. Don't really, I don't know, could have just let it go for sure. But uh, just wanted to, wanted to have a little fun for the vlog, I guess. Uh, it was a good session though. Um, only played for about two hours and then I got switched to the main game. And that game wasn't very good. A lot of players who were playing higher were uh, stepping down a little bit. So. So I wanted to get out of there and just was happy to book a, book a win and have a good session overall. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you have any questions or comments, particularly about the World Series, then let me know. And if you guys see me out there, then uh, please feel free to come up and say hi. Um, I mentioned earlier that I was going to talk about my plans a little bit. I'm definitely going to be playing the Colossus. So check out the uh, 9to5poker.com site to get 10% of any of my winnings for that. And uh, also check out pokersprout.com if you want to get just in the right mindset and you want to improve your, your cash game or your tournament uh, game as well. Um, so I'm going to be playing the Colossus. I'm going to be playing the Monster Stack. And... I think I'm going to be playing the main event as well. Um, I wasn't originally planning on playing it, but last night I had dinner with a buddy and he's a really good poker player and he kind of encouraged me to play it and said that he wanted to buy a big piece. So uh, I'm going to sell to him at 1.1. I might sell a few other pieces as well. I'm not really trying to make a profit on it or anything like that, but um, I think it seems like a pretty fair price. Then I might get some sponsors to try and chip in and then I'll be putting up a big chunk myself. Um, Cosmo said that he's a little bit upset. He hasn't really been in the vlogs lately. So uh, he, uh, he, he wanted to be on this one. I took him for a walk recently and got some footage of that. I've got, I just got a wheel for him as well. So he's been uh, hitting that wheel pretty hard, trying to get in uh, in shape for the summer, trying to get that swimsuit bod going. <laughs> and uh, uh, He's doing really well though. Uh, he wants to say hi. So that's it guys. Hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables and good luck during the series this summer. I hope you get some big scores. See ya.